permitted to make a presentation on tillage and tilt. By the end of this lecture, the student is expected to learn the aspects with regard to that of the land preparation and how the land can be well prepared and what are the conditions under which the land needs to be adopted and where the different types of tillage operations that needs to be uh, attended etc. And also the student is expected to develop the skills with regard to the usage of the different types of implements and also tools that are required for physical manipulation of the soil and also to understand or sensitize with regard to that of the importance of basically the physical manipulation of the soil and how it is also related to that of the biological activities of the soil etc and how it is related to for better crop production tillage and tilt is one of the most important aspects to be understood in crop production because this aspect is related to that of the soil physical conditions and its manipulation so soil physical conditions are ensuring the good condition of the soil is most important in crop production and tilt denotes the physical condition of the soil to achieve the fine tilt it is the one which we call a tillage which is also called as the physical manipulation of the soil so tillage by definition is the physical manipulation of the soil with the tools and implements Tools are the one which are being used manually or by human beings and implements are the one which are being used by animal drawn or by tractor drawn. So tillage is going to manipulate the soil. So manipulation can also be done physically, chemically and biologically. But generally in nature the, physical, the soil manipulation will be attended by biological organisms or in certain cases it is also by chemical action. So in forest areas for an, our understanding or in case of natural farming where the physical condition of the soil will be mainly attended by the biological organisms. So whereas near the industrial areas the land is being disturbed for its cultivation by chemical action. Whereas with regard to that of the physical action or physical ways of achieving the good tilt of the soil it is the quickest means so we are mainly resorting to the aspects of physical manipulation of the soil because we can manipulate the soil in a small span of time so that we can go for crop production or sowing of the crop and ensuring successful pro production of the crops in a small span of time so this can be done only physically when you compare with that of the chemical activities and also biological activities so coming to that of the land so land is one of the most important aspects and the physical condition is the most important aspects and so that we can ensure the crop production and tilt is one of the most important aspects as I have already mentioned because it is going to ensure best establishment of the crop, its growth, its performance etc. So many of the soil physical properties which includes bulk density of the soil, the pore space of the soil, the compactness of the soil, the aeration. So pore space, all these aspects are being influenced by that of the tilt of the soil and this can be needs to be manipulated. So manipulation can be, these are the one of the also important objectives of tillage. So one of the important aspects of the tillage is to ensure that the soil gets good amount of aeration so that the roots also aerate properly and also the, to ensure that the soil has good infiltration capacity so that whatever the water that is being received through rainfall it infiltrates into the soil and also ensure that they store sufficient amount of moisture because moisture retention is also one of the most important aspects and the fourth important object we have got is ensuring the biological activity of the soil this can be also be achieved by better physical by better physical conditions of the soil and of all the bulk density is most important lower the bulk density is always most preferred because lower bulk density is going to ensure that it has good amount of pore space and it helps for good aeration it helps for good root growth etc and also these all objectives can be achieved by physical manipulation of the soil so this physical manipulation of the soil can be done by different implements and based on the stage where we are attending for manipulation tillage can be comfortably divided into preparatory cultivation and after cultivation preparatory cultivation is one where we attend for physical manipulation of the soil prior to sowing of the crop when we attend for manipulation of the soil please remember that manipulation of the soil also needs to be done after sowing of the crop for certain reasons of better crop production such as earthing up of the crop so many times we also attend for earthing up of the crop 
only to avoid the lodging in certain instances to throw more amount of soil for better enlargement of the rhizomes or the components of economical components which are generally underground in nature such as tuberous crops or pots in case of groundnut etc and certain times we also attend for after sowing operations such as irrigation etc so that we can channelize the water in accordance to the rows or in accordance to the crop etc so manipulation also needs to be attended even after sowing of the crop and these manipulations when we attend after sowing of the crop we call it as a after cultivation so coming to these two aspects in preparatory cultivation and after cultivation further for our convenience we can divide into primary tillage secondary tillage and layout of the seed bed with regard to that of the preparatory cultivation and the primary tillage is one which is attended generally after harvesting of the preceding crop what happens naturally is after harvesting of the preceding crops the land will be more hardened in nature because it has been compacted by movement of the machinery or by movement of the work people who are working in the agriculture lands etc so compaction is a very common feature and this compaction is not suitable for sowing of the next crop so we need to attend for primary tillage so primary tillage is the first operation that is being done after harvesting of the preceding crop and generally by meaning by our understanding we know that the land is more compacted in nature so we need to use more amount of energy so generally in primary tillage we will be using implements which are heavy in nature and also we will be using the machinery or draft animals which have to spend more amount of energy so naturally the extent of the land that is being ploughed or prepared by primary tillage will be lower for the equal quantum of the energy that is being spent so after primary tillage operation generally primary tillage will be just opening of the soil we open the soil either in the form of a furrows or by turning of the soil based on the equipment we use when we just open the soil which is generally done by traditionally by country plows so here i have got one equipment i will show you this is a country plow which is being used from a long period of time by animal draft so here the plow will be just opening of the furrow and uh, on its return it also will be opening the other row so what happens for this cultivator is this we call it as a country plow is there will be certain amount of land which will be unplowed in nature this is one of the most important defect of country plow so in its evolutionary process since we have noticed these constraints people have developed a equipment that is called as mold board plow so unlike the country plow what is happening here we have got a shear point which penetrates into the soil we have got a cutting edge which cuts into the soil and this we portion we called as a mold board this board is going to invade the soil completely so we have got two number of boards here the number of boards will be dependent upon the energy that is available if the energy of the tractor is of more horsepower in nature we can include more number of boards so in addition to this we have also got the plows which we call as a disc plow so the disc plow is similar to that of the mold board plow only the thing is here we have got a disc which is rotating in nature and the advantage with the disc plow is so this can be used in lands which are also having more amount of grass in nature stubbles are in nature or which does not allow the mold board to penetrate whenever the mold board cannot be penetrated into the soil disc plow can be completely comfortably used and the energy required for disc plow is also lesser in nature when we compare with that of the mold board plow doing all the operations that are done by mold board plow there is a very good equipment the number of disc also depends upon the energy that is available so we can have two number of disc conventionally we have got two number of disc we can also increase the number of disc based on the availability of the energy second aspect of preparatory cultivation we have got is secondary tillage secondary tillage denotes the lighter and fry, finer operations that are being carried on after primary tillage so since we are already telling that is the lighter and finer operations for a equal quantum of energy the area that can be physically manipulated will be more in nature so naturally secondary tillage will implements will be more wider in nature or it can cover more amount of area for the same amount of energy so the first equipment we have got in secondary tillage implements is this we called as a cultivator so we have got more number of times the number of times conventionally available are 9 to 11 are very common and certain times it will be 13 or 15 generally odd number of tiles will be there only due to the simple reason that for a tractor drawn implement we 
can observe that so it has to be held on the platform so there will be three and four or three four or four five etc like that will be there so number of times general will be ordered in nature this this way you can understand and also you should understand the concept that the times will be generally spaced at a wider spacing so that whatever the residues of the previous crop or anything are there that can be easily passed away and it can i can flow comfortably without making any obstruction so that to the tillage operations so this we call it as a cultivator so similarly along with cultivator we have got one more equipment that is called implement we have got is so this we call it as a blade harrow so this is a harrowing so the harrowing denotes the formation of the soil mulch on the surface of the soil or cutting of the soil on the superficial layers so it is also one of the best thing because so harrowing is generally performed so as a very fine operation so that it is also going to bring a micro leveling on the surface of the soil so that it aids for easiness of the planting of the crop and also since it is going to form a mulch it is also going to reduce the evaporation of the moisture from the underneath layers by breaking of the continuity of the pores so generally harrowing is done in many things so such as conservation of the moisture removal of the weeds or finer leveling etc all these things can be attached attained by this blade harrow certain times these blades are also being replaced by discs as the this we call it as a disc harrow it is very similar to that of the disc plow the only thing is the number of discs will be more in nature because it is a finer operation we have got so these two are other important aspects along with that we have got one more operation in preparatory cultivation that is called as so layout of the seed bed so layout is also more important because layout basically denotes the making of the land for convenience of sowing and after sowing operation so sowing convenience is more in important in nature either we can sow the crop on a flat bed or we can sow the crop on a ridge and furrow or we can sow the sow crop on a broad bed and furrow etc so whatever the things we are intended based on the type of the crop so the physical manipulation of the soil is such done in such a fashion that it aids for comfortness of the sowing of the crop and also post sowing operation and this particular operation is called as layout of the seed bed so along with the three aspects of primary tillage secondary tillage layout of the seed bed which are included in a preparatory cultivation we have also discussed that there is one aspect that is called as after cultivation that is operations that are done after sowing of the crop so generally after sowing of the crop it is a most common that in the case of wide spaced crops so we want to throw the earth in between the rows onto the crop rows so it aids for not only bringing more amount of soil to the root zone of the crop which not only nourishes the crop but also helps to strengthen the crop against larging and so it also aids for form aids for formation of the furrow which aids for easiness of irrigation so which we call it as a furrow irrigation and certain times these are also done in order to remove the weeds that is cultivation of the soil in between the rows that we call it as a intercultivation so intercultivation we have got many types of harrows are there this we call it as a intercultivation implements so that implements width or the implements area depends based on the nature of the crop so for example if the farmer is going for wide spaced crops such as red gram castor cotton etc we use a blade harrow which will be of 1 to 1.5 meter width in nature if a farmers are go if the farmers are going for a small root seed crops so inter row spacing is smaller in nature we use the cultivator which has generally been used for sowing of the crop so so that it aids for easiness or uh, the the roads can be fit very well in nature so certain times it also depends upon the other activities that are required country plow also can be used that is one of the reasons why we call country plow as already we have seen country plow this we call it as a multi purpose because this can also be useful for intercultivation etc and certain times this can also be used for harvesting of the crops such as tuberous crops potato etc we go for harvesting of the crop etc because this also can remove this so these are the good advantage we have got with country plow and the multi purpose implement which we have got is country plow in nature 
So these are the primary aspects which need to be understood with regard to that of the tillage operations and the equipment that are used for tillage and the objectives you are attending, attending for tillage. And coming to that of the ideal seed bed. So ideal in the sense that it should be more congenial in nature for sowing of the crop. So the one thing we should understand is tillage, as I already told you, I again repeat that physical manipulation is done so that this can be very quickly achieved when we compare with that of the biological manipulation. Certain times manipulation of the soil is also being done biologically. Please remember, we have got certain beautiful crops which we call as a soil renovative crops such as red gram etc or castor etc. So biological also soil will be renovated. self tilled soils also we have got. Black soil is a beautiful example or water soils are a beautiful example where the tillage operations will be self tilled in nature due to the expansion and contraction. But these are time taking in nature. So we want to attend quickly that can be attended by physical manipulation. So this we call as a physical tillage operations. So one of the main aspects of ideal seed bed is the seed bed should permit for better sowing of the crop. So in the sense that Wherever the it is required to place the seed, the seed should be placed in that portion. Either with regard to that of the spacing of the crop, both inter space, inter row spacing and intra row spacing, or with regard to the depth of the sowing is also more important in nature agronomically. So sowing of the crop in between the within the prescribed inter rows and intra rows and depth of the sowing, and also it should aid for better infiltration of the moisture it should also help for removal of the any heat that is being tightened inside the soil so naturally what happens is when we keep the land barren for long period of time due to biological activity the soil gets heated up especially in the summer months and when we go for direct sowing so the what is going to happen is it is going to inhibit the germination of the crop due to the variations in the temperature so once if you open the soil a lot amount of heat will be re re released so that, that can also be very clearly noticed physically when we are close to that of the tillage operations so these all activities are going to be attended by tillage operation and ideal seed bed is one which aids for better infiltration better moisture retention better root growth of the crop free from weeds and more granular in nature with regard to the structure of the soil all these things are going to be achieved in the case of the ideal tillage so in recent times however we are also discussing about the modern concepts of tillage in the sense that since this tillage is basically associated with a lot amount of energy that is required to manipulate the soil physically. So people have gone for certain techniques in order to reduce this energy content. So this re reduction in the tillage operations are basically discussed under modern concepts of tillage where we go for minimal tillage or zero tillage etc. But it has got certain advantages and disadvantages there. Whenever the tillage operations are reduced to the minimal of sowing, we call it as a minimal tillage. And whenever you, if you avoid complete tillage operations and go for sowing, we call it as zero tillage. However, the biggest constraint under minimal tillage and zero tillage is weeds are the problem and we need to go for use of the herbicides again. And which is of course, use of the herbicides is being not encouraged in recent years due to that of the our concepts of organic farming etc but however uh, we consider the energy requirements or cost of production etc and minimal tillage zero tillage etc and stubble mulch tillage etc all these are being discussed and certain times tillage operations or physical manipulation is also done in order to attend certain specific objectives such as certain times continuous plowing of the land at equal depth or certain times due to hard, hard pan below the subsurface layer, it is going to hinder the or avoid the penetration of the deep rooted crops. So we need to break that hard pan that can be broken by subsoilers. We call it as the subsoilers or the equipments, implements which are designed in such a fashion that we can plow the land deeper in nature without much physical disturbance on the surface of the land. We can also disturb the land on the surface of the land, but the problem is when we go for disturbing the entire land, it may consume a lot of energy. So this subsoiler, what is making is we have got a train which just penetrates and the shear point is breaks the hard pan inside the soil. So with a little amount of energy, we can open the soil. So the, in recent years, we are also discussing about dead furrows, especially in dry land tracks of Anantapur where we want to conserve the water etc. So water conservation is one of the biggest aspects of physical manipulation or tillage operations also. So uh, we already discussed 
so infiltration is most important aspect to increase the infiltration subsoil is going to aid and subsoil is being widely used in order to break the hard pan and encourage the infiltration of the moisture to the deeper layers of the soil especially this has given very good tremendous results in deep rooted crops such as red gram castor cotton etc and even for certain crops such as grounded etc the results will be excellent only due to the reason that it is going to help for better infiltration of the moisture and better retention of the moisture so these are the few things we have discussed about tillage operations thank you